Marble Index is an advanced, three-channel, full-color compositing module. It allows you to take three separate RGB inputs and composite them in a number of different ways. The idea behind the module is based on digital compositing techniques. And as far as we know, it is the first time these concepts have been implemented in an analog video system. Almost all of the blending modes you might be familiar with with programs such as Photoshop are able to be patched with this module. So let's jump right in. I have the RGB outputs from the Marble Index patched into channel 1 of a visual cortex. I have an external video input coming from a computer into the input decoder. I'm going to take those outputs and plug them into channel A. So I want to ensure that all of my switches are in their middle position. That my opacity for channel A is turned all the way up. Voltage control is at zero. I'm going to do the same for the other channel. This is the default normal state of the module. And what I'm seeing from the visual cortex is exactly what's coming into the input decoder. The A and B channels are identical. There's also a third input for a background that we'll deal with later. The RGB knobs in the middle control the color mix. Any of the three channels can be sent to this mix via a switch. So if I send channel A to the color mix, we could start to manually adjust the color offsets for the image. As we go down below zero, nothing's going to happen once we get past the black point in the middle. If we push the solarize switch, we suddenly get to take advantage of negative values. The clip position on the bottom is going to remove any values below zero volts. We also have an inverting switch for each channel and a negative switch. The negative switch won't have a strong effect until we start layering in different images. So now let's get a second source going on channel B. I'm going to take the output of a color chords. I'm going to plug in a prismatic ray to layer one. As I turn the opacity up, start to see our vertical bars. So to make this a little bit more interesting, I'm going to take a circle ramp, put it into the input of a passage. We're going to use that to sync this VCO. I'm going to take a separate output of the passage and use this as the source on a doorway. And then I'll take the key output and plug that into the opacity voltage control on channel B. As I bring the voltage control up and bring the overall opacity value down, we could start to see that key affecting the opacity of channel B. So by using the opacity control, the marble index allows us to place one image over another image. From here, we can play with channel B's controls. We can invert, we can set to negative, which will just turn it black in this case. We can add it to the mix and start to manually adjust the colors. And we could set it to solarize mode for some different rectification options. We could set it to multiply and we could set it to additive. Later, we'll look at adding a third RGB source into the background. In that case, the controls for channel A operate identically to what we have now with channel B, but it gives us one more background image to play with. And additionally, we have a control for inverting the entire output. This is a good basic patch to start with. And by playing with some of the different options, you can start to get a feel for what the different controls do. So those are the basic features of the Marble Index. In this patch, we'll look at using Marble Index in the context of complex shape and pattern generation patches. Here I'm working with a very compact system, but in the context of a larger system, Marble Index really shines. For example, you could have three separate color chords modules feeding the separate RGB inputs of Marble Index. Each of those, in turn, could be fed by multiple oscillators and other shape generation sources. But even in a smaller system, a lot of great compositing opportunities exist.
In this patch, we're using the marble index to composite a pattern from the prismatic ray, some simple shapes from staircase, and a background coming from the memory palace. So let me show you how this one works. Since we really want to focus on the marble index, for the sake of time, I'm going to go through the shape and pattern creation process pretty quickly. Start with, I'm going to create a shape using the staircase from an H plus V ramp. I'm going to put two outputs here into color chords, which I already have patched into my marble index. Take an additional output, put that into color chords as well. So now we have a simple pattern coming from the staircase. The next thing I want to do is generate a key that I can use in the opacity VC channel. I'm going to use the same source as the staircase. Take the key output from my doorway and put that into the opacity voltage control. I'm going to turn the main opacity down and turn the voltage control input all the way up. So you can now see the center of that shape is being cut out by the key. If I invert the key, I get the opposite effect. And obviously I can set this anywhere along the way that I wish and I can adjust the softness, just like any other keying operation. For the next channel, channel B, I'm going to use a prismatic ray. Now the inputs on the marble index are normaled to each other, meaning that they connect automatically. So if I plug something just into the first one, I'm going to get a monochrome image. I'm temporarily going to turn the other channel off so you can see what we're talking about. Bring the opacity up. To make this shape more interesting, I'm going to take the H minus V ramp, use a passage, with another LFO. And I'm going to put this into the pedestal and frequency voltage control inputs of this oscillator. There we go. So now we have a little bit of movement in our image. Now as I adjust the opacity on marble index, bring this one back up, I could start to blend between our two images. This is an additive blend, and it may be the effect that you want. You can also play with the multiply mode. This is effectively the same thing as using a crossfader or a VCA and other uh, modules in the system. You could also switch it to additive, which will give you a stronger additive effect. Or you can leave it in the middle where you get a simple blend. With the switch in the middle, the opacity control subtracts from the lower channels as you add more opacity to the channel on top. Because this is a monochrome signal, I want to start to introduce some color. So I'll switch the mix switch up on channel B. I'm also going to switch it to solarize. Then I can start to play with colors until I get something that I like. In this case, I want those bars to be keyed so that there's some transparency behind them. So all I need to do is go in my opacity VC input and take a separate output from the prismatic ray. Now I can adjust my pedestal controls until I get something that I like. To make things a little bit more interesting, I'm going to take another output from the prismatic ray and plug it into the phase voltage control on my staircase. This will give me a little more interaction between the two layers. Finally, I'm going to take the RGB outputs on my memory palace, and I'm going to plug those into the background. For the time being, I'm going to turn channel B off so we can see clearly what's going on between channel A and the background. So if I pull my opacity voltage control down to zero, you can see just the background image. As I pull opacity up, you see channel A. Now the way channel A relates to the background is the same way that channel B relates to channel A. This complete mix of channel A and the background is then composited with channel B based on the controls in its section. So let me turn the opacity down on channel A. With the background, we can invert it or make it negative. We can also add it to the mix if we wish and adjust the individual RGB colors. 
And then as we pull the opacity up on channel A, we have a lot of the same controls we saw with channel B. So we could choose to multiply it over the background. We could choose an additive mix. We can invert it. And then similarly, do either of those options. Or we can subtract it. In this case, I'll put it back to all our default switch settings. Turn the opacity all the way down, with the voltage control all the way up. And there we get a standard A over B composite. Now I can bring in my final layer, just these colors because they've gotten a little bit off from where I wanted them. And now we can really start playing with different options. So I can invert channel B, I could subtract channel B, I can play with multiplying, adding, turn solarize off. And we could play with adding different elements into the mix. Inverting, subtracting, and so on. So as you can see, Marble Index gives you a lot of different options in how you can composite your shapes. There's tons to explore, and while this demo is far from a comprehensive overview of the module, hopefully it's enough to get you started. Next, we're going to look at combining three full color images using the Marble Index. In this final patch, we'll look at using the Marble Index at full capacity with three separate RGB inputs and two opacity voltage controls. This patch starts to scratch the surface of the full compositing power of the Marble Index. This patch uses some patterns generated by a staircase into the color cords, a full color RGB video input from an external source, and another RGB video from the Memory Palace. When compositing three separate full color sources, things can get messy pretty quick. One useful strategy for making a more cohesive composition out of several full color sources is to include a lot of cross modulation between the different image sources in your patch. So now let's start from scratch and I'll show you how we got here. To start, I have an external video coming into the visual cortex. That signal is going out into channel A of the marble index. The marble index outputs are going back into channel A of the visual cortex. If I bring the opacity up, you can see the original video source. This is an animation I made in Maya that's perfect food for a video synth. It has a lot of nice organic movement and it also has broad white areas that can easily be keyed. The next thing I'm going to do is create a pattern using the staircase that I can use as a background image. So I'll take an H plus V ramp, go into the source of my staircase, I'll take the output into a color chords, and we'll take the RGB output from the color chords and go into the marble index. Now I'm going to turn the opacity down on channel A so we can see what we're working with here. Great. To provide a little more complexity, I'll take the divide by two output from the staircase and put that into layer two of the color chords. Now I'm going to introduce some cross modulation between image sources. This is going to give me a more satisfying composite in the end. So I'm going to take the Luma output from my external video input, and I'm going to put it into the phase voltage control on the staircase. Now we start to see some interaction between those two different layers. So when I start to bring my color in for my external video, we'll see some interrelated action happening. Finally, for our background image, I'm going to take the ramp and I'm going to process it with a passage. I'm going to sum it with an LFO, and this will just give us a little additional movement. Now I'll take the RGB outputs from the Memory Palace. I'm going to put those into channel B on the Marble Index. I'll turn the opacity up so you can see what that looks like. So again, I want to introduce some cross modulation between the different image channels. So I'm going to take the Luma output and multiply it and use this as the source for a doorway. 
I'll take the key output from the doorway and use that in the opacity voltage control. So now the output from the memory palace is being keyed by the image on channel A. I can also take my H minus V ramp and plug that into the threshold voltage control to add a little bit extra complexity. There we go. So finally, I'm going to take the Y output of memory palace. I'm going to use this to drive the opacity voltage control for channel A. So first I'm going to take the Y output, put that into a passage, sorry, into the input channel on a passage. And I'm going to take the output into a bridge and switch that to X5. This setup gives me a quick and dirty key effect. If you're not familiar with that, it's available in the bridge three patches video. So I'll plug that into the opacity voltage control on the background channel. And now, as you can see, we have a lot of interrelated modulation between the different channels. This can be a little bit finicky to get right. So now that I have all my patching set up, I can start to play with different options. If I invert channel A, this will get me a little bit closer to what I'm going for. I could also take channel A and send it to the mix controls and get some more specific color. Of course, I could do the same with channel B. I could invert channel B. I could invert the entire output. And of course, I can play with fine controls on the opacity and the opacity voltage controls. And of course, other locations in the patch. I can also go back and play with the keying thresholds, the pattern generated by the staircase, any of my modulation sources, and start to get a lot of different results. So Marble Index is truly an analog compositing powerhouse. It can be used in a ton of different ways depending on what kind of effects you're trying to achieve. The opacity voltage control inputs and the different compositing modes allow you to tie really complex patches together in a beautiful and seamless way. I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, please leave any questions or ideas for future videos in the comments below. Thanks for watching.